Welcome back. I'm here with Whatcom County baseball expert Jeff Bearden. And Jeff, uh, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, how have you been doing? Well, I've been doing good, you know, just trying to avoid the uh, viruses flying around yeah. Whatcom County and the in the country right now. It's kind of scary times, but hopefully everyone can come together and, you know, work together as a country and we can get over this. Yeah, I'm hoping so too. And and uh, let's talk a little baseball. Um, if, if you're involved in baseball in Whatcom County, uh, you, know, you know who Jeff is. Um, he's been in contact with so many different people, but uh, what's your first memory of baseball growing up as a kid? Uh, I, I would imagine have to do with um, playing catch or, or watching some old Seattle Mariners? Yeah, actually, you know, because I'm really old. I was born before the Mariners even existed. <laughs> uh, my first memory, I was probably three or four, and I remember just playing catch with my dad out in the backyard. Yeah. Um, and then I think it was like about second or third grade, I found out I had a cousin that was a professional baseball player. Oh, okay. Or a second cousin, I guess, my dad's cousin. And uh, he played for the Milwaukee Brewers. His name was, was Tommy Soto. He had gone to Pepperdine University. And we lived uh, just across the border in Langley, B.C. at the time. And uh, he got promoted to AAA. And the Brewers farm team was in Vancouver, B.C. And so we used to go to the Vancouver Canadian games all the time whenever yeah. they were in town. Right. And, uh, you know, it was... It was great, you know. I got to meet all the players and uh, hang out with them, and I, from there on, I was in love with the sport of baseball. Right. It's easy. It's it's really hard to not fall in love with baseball yeah. because it's just a romantic sport. That's what I always say. Um, of course, you played locally here at Meridian. Uh, we won't say exactly how long ago, but it was roughly 30 years ago. Uh, exactly 30 <laughs> years ago, yeah. Um, uh. So the Whatcom County League at that time was really strong. Uh, Blaine won the state championship uh, at, at that time. Uh, who, what are some of the memories you have against some of those teams and some of the players that you played against? Uh, the, the, Walk, the old Whatcom County League, was, it was tough back then. Yeah. You know, back then it was Blaine, Meridian, Nooksack, Linden, Linden, Christian, Mount Baker. Right. Uh, the six of us. And, I just remember every game was a dogfight. Uh, we had, you know, Nooksack was loaded with yeah. athletic talent. They had Brandon Newell, who yeah. went to the University of Washington and pitched and then drafted by the New York Mets. Right. Tom Ackerman, who right. went to Eastern Washington and, uh, and played football. Right. Uh, but he, he was a great player. And then they had Troy Slayton, yeah. who, who threw really hard back then. For He was a sophomore my senior year, but he was still was bringing bullets back yeah. then. Yeah. I mean, like you said, Blaine won the state title. Right. I mean, they had, they had some great guys on that team. Jay Boykin and... Uh, uh, Rob, Adams. Rob Adams was on that Rod team. Donor. Rod Donor was yeah. on that team. And we act, they actually beat us uh, to go to the state tournament. We played a district third place game at Joe Martin Stadium. And, uh, this is when it was natural grass. Natural too. grass, <laughs> and the hill was still out in left field right. out there that you could run up. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they beat us in that third place game to go to state, yeah. and then they ended up winning the state title that year, uh, which was a, a surprise to everybody but those Blaine players. Sure. Because Nooksack was so good that year, everyone figured they yeah. were the team to beat. Yeah, they were ranked really high all year. All year long they yeah. were ranked. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, Lyndon had Derek Croft playing for him, yeah. who played basketball in, in college, and uh, Mount Baker had guys. and. Every uh, Lyndon Christian had John Vandegrin, who yeah. played at the University of Washington. Yeah. So it was a great league, and uh, yeah, it was a tough league. And for us to even get out of league play and get to district, it was great for us. Yeah. And you know, obviously, would have we would have loved to have gone further, but sure. you know, Blaine and Nooksack represented our league very well that yeah. year. Uh, you got the the chance uh, at a young age to work in the professional baseball you got to work for the Seattle Mariners uh, yeah. and uh, what was what are some stories you have I'm sure you met a lot all sorts of uh, star athletes yeah <laughs> yeah you know guys that I'm still friends with to this day yeah uh, you know started out working in Bellingham here with the Bellingham Mariners yeah uh, and then I got a phone call uh, the spring of 93 and uh, it was the Mariners saying hey We've got an opening with our team in Riverside, California. We got your name from two of our coaches, Dave Myers and Brian Price. 
And uh, they said, you're really good at what you do. We'd yeah. love to have you come down. Yeah. Well, about three days later, I was on a flight to, <laughs> to Riverside, California. Never been to Riverside in my life. Right. And, uh, got down there and loved every second of it. Yeah. And uh, then ended up working with the Mariners in their minor league system for four years. Um, and then eventually with the big league team. And, yeah. Uh, I was with the big league team in 95 during the run. <laughs> That's the year to do it. Right and there. Yeah. I got there after our season in double A was over. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Wilmington, North Carolina. We were the Port City Roosters, most hideous colors of a team you'll ever <laughs> see. But that team in double A was loaded. I mean, yeah. it had Derek Lowe, Jason Veritek, um, Craig Griffey, uh, Ryan Franklin. Yeah. I still have a Ryan Franklin jersey. Raphael Carmona. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm missing guys on that team. I mean, we had, yeah, I think like... there was nine or ten guys off that double-A team, Desi Relaford, yeah. that eventually played in the big leagues. Yeah. So I was there in 95, and then I went, they needed me in Seattle. Yeah. So I said, okay. Drove across country, got back to <laughs> Seattle. Yeah. Um, and when I got back, the Mariners were just starting that push towards the wild card and and getting back into the division race with the Angels. Um, I got back and I kept telling everyone, well, I must be a good luck charm. We've only lost one game since I got back here. Right. Uh, but yeah, I was there throughout that playoff run, the one game playoff with the Angels, yeah. which to this day is one of the craziest days yeah. uh, to be a part of. And then uh, obviously the series with New York Yankees yeah. was something and, and then into Cleveland, even though they didn't win, but yeah, just being a part of that whole process right. to this day. I mean, when I hear Dave Niehaus, ex, yeah. you know, give his great call of Griffey roundings, coming around second, heading towards third, it still gives me goosebumps. Oh, yeah. Because it just seems so unreal uh, to see guys that I know that, I mean, we were the Seattle Mariners, we were nobodies. Right. And to see that group of guys have the success that they did was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, shortly after that, you come back home and you're a part of your alma mater. You're helping out coaching at Meridian. Yeah. And uh, in the late 90s, there was, a, there was a run of really good athletes that you got to coach. Um, of course, that group of seniors in 2000, uh, they just came off a state championship football team mm -hmm. that was just dominated everybody. And then um, you got to, you know, help them get to a third place state finish. Uh, talk about some of those athletes that were on that team. Obviously, you know, I mean, I'll have you mention them, but there were some really good players oh, on that we team. had, you know, it was the Slesk lineage, lineages right there. I mean, yeah. we had uh, Jeff Benham and um, gosh, Eli, Eli Slesk right. was on that team. Uh, Jake Peterson, yeah. Joel Pears. Joel Pears, yeah. Uh, it was just great athletes yeah. that we had on the field. And they were the kind of kids that could do anything when it yeah. came to the football and baseball field. Yeah. Um, and they loved the sports. Yeah. They loved playing baseball. And they had grown up together yeah. playing. That's huge. Playing together. Um, but, yeah, we had, a, had put together a really good team. And we knew going into the season that, that we had a shot. Sure. And uh, when we got to the, you know, we got to the state final four in Yakima and, you know, we were looking at, okay, who are we drawing here? Well, in the semifinals, we probably, we played Elma yeah. and probably drew the hardest, the toughest pitcher we'd, we'd faced all year. Right. Um, the kid would eventually go to University of Washington yeah. and, and pitch. And, uh, but we had, we had a chance in the first inning, we ended up losing, I think it was five to one was the final score, but we had a chance in the first inning. We had bases loaded, uh, nobody out, and just a couple, uh, just bad luck. Yeah. You know, Jake Peterson took a foul ball off the bat, hit him in the eye, knocked him out of the game. He was our, our big bopper. Yeah. And he comes up with the bases loaded and and you're thinking, hey, this is... We good. got a shot. Yeah. And to beat good pitchers like that, yeah. you've got to get you on them early. You have to take advantage. You've yeah. got to take advantage early. Yeah. And we thought, okay, we got a chance here. Bases right. loaded, nobody out. We get a couple runs here. I like our chances. Yeah. And uh, But it just didn't happen. And 
But I was proud of the guys. We, we turned around the next day and uh, we played Afreda, who back then seemed like they won the state title every year. Right. They had just a dynasty going. And, uh, but we played for third place the very next day and we came out and we opened a can on them. Yeah. I mean, we scored, I think, 14 or 15 runs. Oh, man, just let and it all out. We, it did. I think the pressure was off of us. Yeah. Um, and the guys did what they normally did, which right. was hit the ball and, yeah. and play great defense. And we did. It was great. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was the only disappointing thing was we didn't win the state title. But, sure. you know what, that team was, was a lot of fun to be with. There's been a lot of great talent um, even since then. I mean, you've you've co you've come back and helped coach at Meridian. You've you've been a, a Legion coach at, for Post Seven. Uh, so there's been so many. You talk about Jake Locker, your Joey Pachoric, or I mean, there's so many guys that have been really great baseball players, and now kind of coming up. A lot of eyes are on Jacob Kaepernick at mm -hmm. Seahome. Uh, he's, you know, his ERA was under one last year. He struck out 73 batters, only walked 10. Um, and when you talk about a program like Seahome, and, and uh, of course, Gary Hatch forever was just that legendary coach. Monty Walton, who was with them for majority of that time, is now the new coach. Um, what kind of program does Seahome built have, and, and what do you always look for them to do? Every year, Seahome's going to be good. They're going to be fundamentally sound, yeah. uh, pitching-wise, defensively, hitting-wise. They're, they're not afraid. You know, there's a big push in pro baseball now. Don't bunt. Yeah. Uh, we've got two schools in this county, Meridian and Seahome, exactly. that aren't afraid to bunt. Yep. They'll give up the outs to, to push a run across. Yeah. Um, it's and they're a, winning programs. And they're winning programs. Exactly. So you can't tell me that what they're doing is wrong. Right. Because they're there every single year, you know, competing for state yeah. titles or at least getting to the state tournament. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you just look at the good programs. Linden, Seahome, Meridian, yeah. guys that are there every year, mm -hmm. you know, and it starts with youth programs. Yeah. Uh, Linden has an unbelievable youth program for all sports. Yeah. So it's not a surprise. People always say, "Well, why is Linden so good every year?" Yeah. Well, it starts. Yeah. It starts at the at the very bottom there when these kids are five years old. Yeah. They're playing youth sports, and uh, and the kids that play for Seahome, they're playing you know little league or, or boys and girls club, YMCA. Then they go up and they play crush baseball or whatever growing yeah. up and. That's where you you see these programs exceeding is succeeding is because they've grown up with it. Right. And, but yeah, Seahome's going to be good. Yeah, Seahome's yeah. Gonna be really They're always going to be good. Yeah. Of course, you know Coach Slask very well at yeah. Meridian, and he oh he you know he runs a tight practice. It's very oh, hard nosed, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's and it's, it's the same thing. You know, the cleanup hitter will bunt. Yeah. It, it's it's not even a question. Everyone needs to learn how to bunt. Um, of course, we mentioned Monty Walton. He's been the head coach for about four years, but he was the assistant he's for over 30 Monty's years. Monty's been around baseball. Oh, man. He's another guy who's been around baseball since he was a little kid. I yeah, mean, exactly. his dad. His dad, Mal. The, yeah. His dad, the great Mal Walton. Yeah. I mean, is a baseball legend. Yeah. I mean, he played for the Pittsburgh the Pirates yeah. growing up. And um, yeah, Monty has been around the game and knows a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and speaking of uh, youth baseball, your son Brady is five years old. He just he just he just played a little bit. And I I have to have a question for you because okay. because I've I've seen uh, him throw out the first pitch at Bellingham Bell's games, and I notice he's uh, he's left-handed. He is now. Is he is because I've heard stories of parents that love baseball that will teach their kid to eat left-handed. They'll they'll tie the right arm <laughs> down, and I wouldn't put it past you, Jeff, but. Hon is he naturally left-handed? Honestly, he is naturally left-handed. All right, okay. But he's, it's strange because <laughs> he throws left-handed, yeah. but he hits right-handed. I've okay. tried to get him to hit left-handed, but no, he's yeah. more comfortable hitting right-handed. The only person I know, and I just heard this uh, last year, Evan White. The new Seattle Mariners yeah. first baseman is yeah. the same way. Yeah. Ricky, Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson yeah. throws left, hits right. Yeah. And at first I was like, gosh, this isn't going to work. <laughs> but 
I'm seeing other guys do it. Yeah. I'm going to let him go with it. Yeah. So, yeah. If he wants you to do what's natural. Yeah. Right? So I think, you know, pitching, he's way more natural throwing left handed. Yeah. And, and hitting, he's, I mean, he can do it left handed, but yeah. not as well as he hits right handed. And know? he's playing with kids a little older than him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, and so he's got that advance. I mean, I've seen the videos of can't wait till dad gets home to go play catch. He's in. Full, full gear. baseball oh, gear. Man. And that's what's cool is because you, to see the youth of America, people talk about baseball as like a dying sport and that mm-hmm. kids aren't as involved in it anymore. And I think that, I think it's a sport that if you get them in early, it's a sport, like I say, I'm romantic about it. It's hard not to love it. Um, every kid seems to play it growing up somehow or they understand the basic rules. And right. So it's so cool to see someone that's so young to get into it and love it so much. Yeah, and you know, he even if I'm not at home, every once in a while he'll grab his baseball gear and, and the little indoor balls and he'll give them to mom to pitch. Yeah. And he'll just stand in the corner of the living room and yeah. he'll hit and she'll pitch to him <laughs> and stuff like that. But yeah, it's... Uh, I would never push baseball onto them. Yeah. Um, I, I think kids get enough pressure as there oh, is, sure. and they need to do what they love. Yeah. I mean, and he also loves other, I mean, he loves singing and loves music and dancing yeah. too. So, but he does love baseball. And, yeah. you know, I know he's disappointed. We were supposed to go see his favorite player, Ernie Yate, yeah. play for Gonzaga uh, coming up here. and down at University of Washington, they were mm-hmm. playing the Huskies, and that's now been canceled. So I know he's a little disappointed about, yeah. about not being able to see that. Yeah, well, hopefully it's not gonna be a disappointment around the high school sports time. I mean, yeah. they've, as, as of now, the state tournaments are still in place. Right. And so it's gonna be figuring out tournaments and how to get to state, um, but uh, we'll just all have to wait and see. And, and find yeah. out kind of uh, what that means for Whatcom County. So yeah, and it's the thing we're in right now. You just we have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, and uh, it's something brand new yeah. for everybody. And you know, hopefully, everyone takes care of themselves, and yeah. we can get this over with as soon as possible, and get back to the things that we love in this country. That's right. All right, well, there you go. Thanks a lot, Jeff, for stopping by, and Thank hopefully you. I'll see you out at the baseball field. Definitely, I'll definitely be Hopefully there will be, be baseball for us to watch. So. Yes, I hope so, too. And thanks again to Jeff Bearden for being our first guest. And we'll be back next Sunday with Linden Tribune sports reporter Haley Palmer. I'll see you next week.